الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وإنما توعدون الأواق أما بعد فأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله تعالى فإنه رأس الطاعة فأجمل له بالطلب أما بعد أيها الحباء الكرام ما دي بذي سيسترز إن إسلام We've been in this pandemic almost seven, eight months and the number one question the world, the humanity, regardless of being of any faith, is asking, when is this going to end? And as an Imam, we face many questions from the jaliyah, from the community, that Imam, when is this pain and suffering and this difficulty and hardship will end? When will hard times end? When will we have sukoon? When will we have peace? When we have, we, we have no more troubles, no more suffering, no more pain. And when a Muslim asks this question, I become very puzzled. How can a Muslim ask this question? The same Muslim or Muslim, he or she, who has memorized Surah Balad, Surah number 90, which Allah SWT revealed on our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in Mecca. لَا أُقْسِمُ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدْ وَأَنْتَ حِلٌّ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ وَوَالِدٍ وَمَا وَلَدٍ لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي إِيش كَبَدْ ما هو كَبَدْ؟ Allah SWT is swearing by four things and to emphasize as we know in tafsir when Allah is taking a qasm and oath it is to emphasize and stress the point that is going to come after the sequence of those ayat so Allah Subhanahu swears by Mecca, Ard al Muqaddasa, Ard al Anbiya. La uqsum bi hadha al balad. Wa anta ya Muhammad alayhi salatu salam hillum bi hadha al balad. Yani the livelihood, the living of Rasulullah in Mecca, Allah swears by that and swears by Mecca, the ahabbu al bilad ila Allah, wa ahabbu al ard ila Allah, wa ahabbu al ard ila Nabi Muhammad sallam. Kama qal alayhi salatu salam fil hijra from the Jabal, from the mountain. Allah swears by Mecca, by the land of the Kaaba, and He swears by the livelihood and living of Rasulullah in Mecca. And then Allah swears by every father. Every father and every child. The first father, Abu al-Bashar, Abu al-Insan, Adam alayhi salam, to the last father, they'll become a father before the trumpet is blown by angel for the trumpet. Every child that is born, every father that becomes a father, Allah swears by that. What? لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We insan, نَحْنُ كَالْبَشَرَ الْإِنسَانَ نَحْنُ خُلِقْنَا لِأَجْلِ إِيش الْكَبَدْ What is kabad? Kaf ba dal. You have, mashallah, a great imam, a great scholar, an Arabic teacher who must have taught you very well that this three-letter word, kabad, means struggle, suffering, striving, effort. Allah is saying we have created insan in a struggle that insan never rests. We do not rest. The only time we rest is when, when I asked this question at another masjid, they said they start going like this. Any sleep, a no, la, khata. Because even in sleep, sometimes you wake up because somebody's snoring next to you. 
or even in the sleep, you're not sleeping peacefully, you wake up in the middle. The only time we rest is fil barzakh, in the grave. When we make the janazah, and I know some people say, but Imam, in the barzakh, life al barzakh, you have azab al qabr. Yes, that's a whole different story. It's a whole different world out there. Life of Barzakh, we don't know what it is like. When we get there, we'll find out. As far as dunya is concerned, your worries and your problems and your pain and your sufferings and your difficulties end with al gargara. You know gargara? <laughs> when the ruh is being extracted from the body. I don't know how many of you have witnessed somebody die in your laps. I've seen many people of my relatives die in my laps. Grandmother, grandfather, uncle, aunts, and I've seen the gargara. When you see the, when you hear the sound of the ru, and you know that this is the end. Inna lillahi wa inna raj. The person who just died, do they have to worry about paying bills? The person who we just prayed janazah for, do they have to worry about what career their kids will go and take? What school or college will they go to? Do they have to worry about the marriage of their kids? They have to worry about buying a house, buying a car, this and that, no worries. No matter mahma kana zuroof, no matter how your circumstances are, al maut is the maut, it's the end of kabat. Laqad khalaqna al insana fi kabat. Brothers and sisters, if one thing we can understand from this khutbah is that our life is meant to be a struggle. We cannot rest. We finish with one bala, with one problem, another starts. We finish with that one, another starts. We finish this one, another starts. This is the meaning of kabad. And as ta'rif, this is the lughawi ta'rif. And uh, as we, the ulama have said, al kabad ay khalaqnao maghmuran fi makabid al mashaq wa shadaid wa ta'ab wa nasr. The person is maghmur, you know, maghmur submerged. When somebody asks you, brother, how are you doing? Oh, I'm up to my head in problems. I have this problem, that problem, this problem, that problem. Maghmurun fi ayy shay fi makabada al mashaq. Al mashaq, suffering, stress, difficulty. Why does Allah give us these difficulties and pains and sufferings? And then Allah tells us in Surah Nisa also, wa khuliqa al insana dha'ifa. Allah. هنا يقول تبارك وتعالى لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد وهناك يقول تبارك وتعالى خلق الإنسان ضعيف الإنسان الضعيف the weak insan is in constant kabad struggle we are very weak we break down on little things we have a nervous breakdown we cry at times we pull our hair out and we say why why me يا الله لماذا أنا يا الله لماذا أنا why me out of all the billions of people but Bushra and glad tidings are for the people who are sabirin, who are patient and dhakirin, remembering Allah subhanahu wa And Allah subhanahu wa through our Prophet Muhammad sallam, said in a hadith in a beautiful one, Musa ibn Sa'id reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Bala bil-Abd Translation, Rasul said the servant will continue to be tried or tested until he is left walking upon the earth without any sin. You see people dying from cancer in hospital. You see people dying from all kinds of difficulties. You, pe you see people dying from a sudden car accident, instant. And you say like, subhanAllah, this brother, sister, was five times praying in the masjid, dhikr, they're very religious. Why did they have to die like this? Allah wants to take us in pure, tahir, pure. And that is why Rasul said that our sicknesses and our diseases and our bala are a way to shed our sins, our mistakes. We are insan from nisyan, forgetfulness. We accumulate sins. Allah doesn't want a dirty, filthy abd to come back. Why? Because Allah said in Surah Fajr, Ya ayyatu an nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatun mardiyya. Oh, you the tranquil, peaceful soul, nafsul mutma'inna, irji'i, return to Allah. How? Radiyatun mardiyya. That Allah is pleased with you and you're pleased with Allah. 
we need to attain and achieve nafsul mutma'inna qabla al-mawt. And shahada and al-mawt is a big, big prize from Allah. There's some people who are dying and they're singing songs on their tongue, the latest songs that they memorize while they were alive. And there are some people who are dying and you listen to Qira'at al-Qur'an or Shahada, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah or Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah and they die like this with their Shahada finger stretched out. The mouth also describes the kafiyat al-insan. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We created insan in kabad. And the number one question, especially the shabab, the youth ask, brother, imam, why Allah test us so much? Why does he love to test us? Why can't he just give us a break for God's sake? I have an answer from our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallam. And Mahmud ibn Labid reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallam said, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ Just memorize these three words. When I remember these three words, all my worries and pains and sufferings, they just go. It's like a tranquilizer. You know, they have an injection in hospitals that if you are restless, they just tranquilize you. And then suddenly you go, you sleep. These three words are tranquilizer for every Abdullah and Amatullah, every slave of Allah and every slave woman of Allah. When Allah loves a qawm, and for that matter from a qawm, you can extrapolate to a abd. In another riwayah is, If Allah loves a slave of his, test them. Why? How do we know that Allah loves us? The Sahaba Kiram Ridwan Tajma'in, they used to get worried. If they had no bala, no ibtila, if they had no tests and trials in their life, they'll become worried, concerned. Is Allah angry? Is Allah upset from me? Does Allah even look at me? They will be worried. Whereas we are on the opposite. We become worried when the test is there. And when there's no test in life, we are relaxed. Ah. Thank God I can have a breather, sigh of relief. No more worries right now at least until the next problem comes, maybe a month down the road. The Sahaba were opposite. Why? Because Allah said about them, radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. This accolade, this khitab is not for free, my dear brother and sister Islam. Allah didn't just say it like this for the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum wa radu'an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah because Allah tested the Sahaba the most. Just like in another hadith, Rasulullah said that the uh, ashaddu ibtila'an al-anbiya, al-anbiya ashaddu ibtila'an. The most tested are the prophets of Allah amongst humanity. Then after them, the ulama. Then after them, the next one, next one, one. So the question that I ask is, people ask, why so much test? The answer for that is in this hadith of Rasulullah is that habba Allah qawman, when Allah loves a qawm, a society, a group of people, He afflicts them with trials and tribulations and tests. And whoever is patient after the test comes to them, then for them is written patience, meaning the jaza of patience, the reward of patience, which only Allah knows what He will bless us for that. And whoever is impatient, al jaza is this haughtiness, the hot headedness, that, you know, rebelliousness. Fighting with halat, fighting with circumstances, you know, banging your head on the wall. That why am I this? Pulling your hair, you know, putting your fists together. This is al jaza. That a person is restless and panicky and stressful, anxiety. No, don't fight with the problems. They have come here for you to elevate you and make you more beloved to Allah. And then Allah Himself answers. In the Quran, in Surah Ankabut, Surah 29, verse number two. Ahasiba nasu an yuthraku an yaqulu aman. Ah, subhanallah. You say you believe? Yes, I believe. Brother, sister, I believe in Allah. Yes? You say the shahada? Yes. Well, guess what? You are asking for trouble now. The moment you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Rasulullah, how will Allah know that? Allah knows already, but how will you know that you really meant it by your heart? not tongue.
And that's why Allah revealed this ayah in Surah Ankabut, Surah 29, Surah of the Spider, verse number two. Ahasib al nas, subhanallah, Lughat al Quran, Lughat mu'jiza. I mean, Quran is amazing. I mean, I am an Ajam, we are Ajam, we're not born Arabs. We learn the language and the lazza, the shawk and uns of Arabic. You know, you can, you can just feel it, you have to sense it. And you can't feel it unless you learn Arabic and you have a big blessing by the Imam in this mother to teach you Arabic, to learn and not waste time before death. That Allah is saying, Ahasiba nasu, do people think, do they apprehend, do they anticipate? I mean, Arabic language is so powerful, you can have a plethora of English words for just one word. And look, Allah says, Naz. Do people think that they'll be left alone? A Turk. Leaving something. You think people. Do people think that they'll be left alone after they say, I believe or we believe? Meaning when they say they believe, this opens the door for kabad, ibtila, bala. And that's why Allah says in the ayah, Do they think that they will be left alone after saying, amanna, wa hum la yuftanun, fitan, from fitna, fitan. Whom la yuftanun bimana, and they will not be tested and tried. This kalima shahada is very precious. Hada kalima ghali is very valuable. Al jannah du ghaliya, like Rasulullah said in the hadith, jannah is very valuable, very precious. It's not rakhis. Jannah is not cheap, my dear brother Islam. We can't just say la ilaha illallah, although the hadith say that if qulu la ilaha illallah tuflahu, there are many hadiths of that. But what I mean to say in that context, don't take me wrong. Some people may argue in terms of aqidah. Just saying the kalima is not enough to get in. Yes, according to the hadith on the book, on the paper it is, but it needs to be worked for. A'mal salihat. Alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat. Alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat. Those who believe and do righteous good deeds. And that is why Allah is saying, wa hum la yuftanun, that the people will not be tested? No, certainly. Bala, indeed they'll be tested. Allah says the next ayah in Surah Al-Gabur, verse number three, وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ سَرْدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ We tested the people that came before them so that Allah will know that الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا Those who are truthful to the kalima, صدق of the kalima, those who are sincere, sincere to the kalima. What does sincere to kalima means? إن شاء الله في الخطبة الثانية أقول قولي هذا واستغفر لكم وسائل المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه الغفور الرحيم التائب من الذنب كمن لا ذنب له My dear brothers and sisters of Islam, our life is a struggle. And the lazza in struggle is mahabba ma'al khaliq. Those who don't struggle in life, they don't know the meaning of the love of Allah, the Creator. When you are in extreme stress, when you're in extreme duress, and you're so perturbed, anxiety and panic, and you make wudu, and you pray two rakah, and you get in the sujood, and you ask, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Latif, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Allah, Ya Rahim, Ya Allah, Ya Hanan, Ya Allah, Ya Manan, Ya Allah, Ya Qadi al Hajat, Iqdi Hajatina. When you say this, you feel the warmth of love of Allah. Al Mahabba, Al Shawk, Al Uns. You feel you have a creator, a master listening to you. And Allah loves to see His ibad beseeching Him, pleading Him, 
begging him, crying to him. What good is a prayer rug, a carpet, which is not wet with our tears? Tears of love for Allah. Tears of ishtiaq. Mushtaqun ila liqa al-Rabb. Ishtiaq, mushtaq, meaning the longingness, the earnest desire to meet Allah. You know how the Sahaba don't tell you used to look at death? When they asked them, when they asked the Sahaba, what is mawt? al ma'rab. The companions of Rasul, they were not scared from death. They used to long for the death because death is the way to meet Allah. Ya ayyatul nafsul mutma'inna irji'i la rabbiki radiyatul mardi. And that is why these life's troubles are not there to weaken us. These life sufferings and problems and issues, whether it's a loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of business, things not going my way, things going against, you know, COVID, pandemic, disease, unexpected bills, was saving money for my son's college, suddenly some expense came up and in one shot it all drained. Why? All these things that happen in life, unexpected, unusual things, they're happening in life for a reason. For us to have sabr and for us to get closer to Allah. Muqarrab ila Allah. Al Muqarrabeen ila Allah. Like Allah says in Surah Waqiyah, As Sabiqoon, As Sabiqoon, Ulaika al Muqarrabun. As Sabiqoon, As Sabiqoon. We have to win the race. Everybody's suffering. I bet you a hundred times not a single person in this masjid can say, Imam, I have no suffering, no problem in life. I'm worry free, trouble free, problem free. مستحيل هذا مستحيل impossible لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد الخالقنا ومالكنا ورازقنا يقول في القرآن الكريم our creator our master our provider is saying in the Quran that we will test you and we will continue to test you until you die so no one can say I'm worry free yes somebody's worries may be little some medium some high those from the higher class higher category bushra good news for you Allah loves you so much like the hadith is that have Allah common if and the more and Allah love all the Anbiya alayhi sallallahu all the prophets of Allah were mahboob ila Allah look at the prophets of Allah they were in their kabad from the beginning to the end look at our Habib Mustafa Muhammad sallam wulid a yateeman ashaddu bala wulid a yateeman ask an orphan child ask an orphan boy and girl what does it feel like to be born fatherless I never saw my father. I never knew this al yutm yatim until I grew up to be at least of senses and I asked my mother and she was born a yatim. My mother was a yatim. And she said, you know, son, I never saw my father because he died out of cancer way early. He said, I don't know what Baba looks like. I don't know what the love of a Baba is. Her brothers, my uncles, they said, we never saw because our father died when my uncle was three, my mother was two, and my younger uncle was only six months old. And my grandfather died. This is Yateen, Al Mahroom. You are deprived of the love, Shafaqa of Al Ab. Those of you who have children today, hug them, kiss them. You're lucky to have your son and daughter around you to cuddle because my and your Prophet Muhammad could not hug his father. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ And remember, Rasulullah is Uswa Hasana, the highest example. So Allah put him in the most stress, in the most kabad. He is born yatim. And his dying is also in suffering. Sakratul الْمَوْتِ You know from the seerah, all those ahadith, how he was dying. Ah, ah, wa abata. Fatima Zahra saying, wa abata. His beginning was kabad, his ending was kabad. And he's asking Jibreel, Ya Jibreel, Ummati, Ummati, Walam Yaqul, Ya Jibreel, Fatima, Binti, Binti. Even in his pain and suffering, who is Rasulullah worried about? Me and you. The Muslim that will come after him until Yawm al Qiyamah. Wa madha fa'ana bi sunnat al Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah musta'ala. And what did we do with the sunnah of Rasulullah, the one who loved us so much that he cried for us even in death bed? Allahumma may Allah help us. And I finish with this ayah in the Quran, in Surah Zumar, Surah 39, verse number 2. 
Allah SWT says very beautifully. This is the answer, the jawab Allah gives to the Qari Al-Quran. لماذا كبد؟ لماذا ابتلاء؟ لماذا الامتهان؟ لماذا الفتن؟ لماذا ولماذا ولماذا؟ يقول ربنا سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم في سورة زمر ألا لله الدين الخالص ألا لله الدين الخالص Before that in verse number two Allah says فاعبد الله مخلصا له الدين فاعبد الله مخلصا له الدين الله يطلب منا الإخلاص وليس أقل من ذلك Allah requires and mandates from us ikhlas, purity and sincerity for him and his Nabi Muhammad Nothing less than that. And who am I to tell people who are Bostonians or Massachusetts? You have the best Ivy League schools in this country, right here. Many people get deprived. They don't even get entrance into these Harvard and MIT and whatnot. What are they doing? They are getting the cream of the cream from society. They don't you know, recruit students who are, you know, like lower mill of the mill. They recruit the top, the cream, and they produce the cream. What goes in is what goes out. The ikhlas, I'm not comparing that to ikhlas, but I'm saying when you have the purity and the sincerity, the best of the best in your deen, in your life, in your hayat, you will have the output also the best. What? Jannat al-Firdaus. And I finish with this hadith of Rasul Sallam. He said, إذا سألتم الله الجنة فاسألوا الفردوس. If you ask Allah for Jannah, my dear brother and sister in Islam, ask Him Allah for Firdaus, Al Jannah Al A'la Maqam. Don't settle for the less. A mu'min, a Muslim is not someone who just says, I want to get past. I just want to get my foot in Jannah. Oh no, no, brother, if I can just get my toe in Jannah, I'll be happy. No, no, sir, never. A Muslim does not settle for less, we settle for the best. We want Jannah, Jannah al Firdaus, where they are uh, Al Anbiya, wa Rusul, wa Siddiqeen, wa Shuhada, wa Hasuna Ulaika Rafiqa. We want to be there. We want to meet Yunus, alayhi salam. We want to meet Yusuf, alayhi salam. We want to meet Zakaria, alayhi salam. We want to meet all the Anbiya that we read about in Quran. Say, I learn about your story in the Quran. Thank God I can see you face to face and shake hand with you. Because I'm in Jannah al Firdaus al A'la. Laqad khalaqna al Insana fi Kabad. Brothers and sisters, don't get tired of your cupboard. Never ever get tired of your struggles and strife. Next time when shaitan puts wasosa in your mind, in your brain, enough is enough. I can't bear my worries. I can't bear my problems. Remember this ayah of Surah Balad. Laqad khalaqna al-insana fi kabad. Inshallah, inshallah, we will get to Jannah. May Allah accept from us all our ibadat. May Allah accept from us all our أعمال صالحات ما الله فقير أو سين فقير أو شورت كمينز اللهم اغفر المسلمين والسماد المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء من والأموات إنك أنت سميع وجد أواد إباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يعمر بالعهد الإسان وإيتاء القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر البغي يعذكم لم تذكرون الله